Good day. This is Brad Caleb, PhD. And my PhD stands for Post Hole Digger. You might wonder why am I using my PhD? Because I continue to work on a proper foundation for the prodigal son and daughter. We just saw it again. Six hours of paralysis. The United States Capitol storming was a riot and a violent attack against the 117th United States Congress at the United States Capitol on January 6, 2021. Part of a wider protest carried out by a mob of supporters of Donald Trump, the 45th President of the United States, failed to overturn his defeat in the 2020 presidential elections. The riot led to the evacuation and lockdown of the Capitol and five deaths. It turns out that there are more deaths that followed since then. Over 70 police officers are still in hospital. Some with eyes poked out, others with broken vertebrae. A terrible ordeal. And we are going to find out what is happening.
The title I use for today is Raised in Ignorance, as McDonnell, McConnell lost his sighting. Is that true? He lost his sighting and his sling. Why Trump appears to be a pandemic with 10 plagues. On February the 13th, 2021, we saw Goliath slay the GOP David. They had a chance to stand up and show that they had guts, for they gave up in fear of his mighty lies and them losing power again. Signing for the truth to call a guilty verdict. What does it all mean? And why is the body of Christ at the brink of a major disaster? Nancy Pelosi commented, it's pathetic that the Senate shut down so article of impeachment couldn't be reached and used as that as an excuse for the voting to acquit. Actions have consequences. And Mr. Mitch McConnell, as well as the former GOP great ones, and why do I say former? Seven men and women stood up and said he is guilty. Based on reality, I'm not going into politics, but the fact that you dare to stand up and admit if something is wrong or something is right has to do with your belief system. What lives inside of you? Actions have consequences. Mitch McConnell at Mitch is taking the Republican Party down and dead end road with the condemnation of Trump's actions and declaring Trump not guilty. Mitch will come to an understanding, hopefully, with his delay tactics. When he had Trump still in office, he said, no, no, we can't do anything till Mr. Biden is in office. And then it was too late because Mr. Trump was no longer in office. Stuff like this, you can play as a lawyer, but as a man that stands on principles, you just lost. Goliath won. Lies, cheats, steal, all kinds of corruption. And so what is Trump going to face? He got a guilty verdict. Wonderful. The screw back screwed everyone again. But what is happening? People have been exposed to a true Trump visit. They now saw how Trump really looked. Is that the case? Not really, because we are looking at a man that is so full of himself. Some people call it a disease. They said, well, he's a narcissist. Some people say, no, he has HDHD. Uh, that means that he cannot really concentrate. But I believe that this man is so rotten because he is enabled by so many of you. Christians, the body of Christ, enabled the man that wants to bring the whole world down to its knees so that he will be Mr. King Kong. And the body of Christ has been very quiet. Like the senators, they failed to act. If the body of Christ would have stood up and said, this is not a this is not right, then they could have fixed a problem because what does the body of Christ stand for? Are we sick, folks? Do we suffer of tickly ears? Are we all in the grip of money? Oh, I got mad. You know, I need a special regulation and certificate for Mr. Trump so I can get more money. Folks, are you serving mammon? The lust of money? Or are you serving God Almighty, who is on the way, the truth and the light? That is what we were invited for. So if the body of Christ is quiet, what do they really think? Always follow the money. Mr. Trump won on this particular situation with the impeachment, but he will be facing many other challenges whereby criminal offenses also are cited. And it doesn't matter if it is state or federal, he will be facing those. You know why? Because everyone, no matter who you are, no matter what you claim to be, will have to give accountability. 
and so I end up with the body of Christ. Where is Mr. Kenan Copeland? Where is John Hakey? Where is Sid? Where is Paula White? Where is Pat Robertson? Folks, there is no problem making mistakes. But you know what is worse? When God said, come, repent, and you are too stubborn to repent because you are holy. You have been an asshole. Yes, those are terms that you don't say in church, but I'm glad that I don't care because you are a asshole. And as an asshole, you have to do something. You either lay flat in the shit of the pigs, okay, your prodigal son like me, and you are nothing else but a man or a woman that has to wake up and say, listen, what are we doing? You lead a group of people and God says you are responsible. If you say, thus says the Lord, and the Lord does not speak. First of all, do you know where we're coming from? When I ask, do you know where you're coming from? I mean, very simple. We had a confrontation, an encounter as the body of Christ, the followers of the way, the truth and the light in 325 AD with another emperor, an emperor of Rome, Constantine I. We claimed we were the followers of Yeshua HaMashiach, or most people know him as Jesus. Things had changed. They had killed off the Jewish people, the Jewish leaders, people that were born as a Jew. They were the Essenes. Those were the people that Jesus taught how to live, how to be an example, how to be a newborn person. And as 300 years progressed, in 325, the emperor of Rome decided he was fed up. He would change that. He did not like the fact that people would not bend the knee for him. <clears throat> so he claimed that he was had become a Christian. But you know, the word Christian in itself was already a terrible name. Because in 325 AD, that was BC, my apologies. AD means Anno Domino in the year of the Lord, but BC is before Christ. That is 350 years before Yeshua was born. There was a under God, a God from the underworld, Serapis, and the people that followed him were called Christians. And so that had nothing to do with Jesus Christ. And so when 325, that was almost 700 years later, when the Emperor of Rome said, okay, this is what I want you to do. We, the body of Christ, came to life. And when I say we, I was brought up a Christian. I went to school. I went to Bible school, seminary. I worked in the gospel in the missionary office, preached the gospel for many, many years. And each time I wondered, why is something missing? There is something wrong. And as I kept on working and working and had the chance to travel all around the world, I discovered something. People are all the same. They want peace. They want happiness. Whether you're Muslim, whether you're Buddhist, whether you're Christian, whether you're a non-believer, they want the same basics. And why can we not give that? Because we are so screwed up, folks. We are screwed up. Yes. In 325 AD, the premises to become a Christian were as follows. First and foremost, Jesua became a God. He was the messenger. He was not God. He never claimed to be God. He came to fulfill the will of God. People don't talk about it because it's a subject that is sensitive. Folks, that is ridiculous. 
every subject should be able to be spoken of. So if we have a trinity, is that trinity because God said so, or because the emperor of Rome said so? It was the emperor of Rome that decided to have a trinity. Why? Because so many of his people were just total unbelievers and they had trinities based on Baal, based on false gods that wanted to be and were based on trinities. And therefore, Alex uh, not Alexander, but Constantine, he made it a simple issue. For the other people, he wanted to have three gods. God the Father, God the Son, and Maker and Holy One, the Holy Spirit. And what do we do every morning, every day? We're praying in that name. Well, God says there is one God, and that's him. And what Jesus came to save us, he was a man, born as a man, and he is no God. That God lifted him up and accepted him as the firstborn. That means the firstborn in a restorative justice. That meant that Jesus, or Jeshua, was the first person to be restored in that relationship between Adam and Eve and God. See, when Adam and Eve failed, when they lost the desire to listen to God because Satan whispered something in their ears, God had to immediately do something. He created Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve were both created physical, they had a mental capacity, and they were spiritual. And in order to develop the spiritual part, God trained Adam. And as Adam was being taught how to become a God, he and immediately God chopped them off, because otherwise they were lost forever. And God loves his children like we love our children. If you are a father or a mother, you know what I'm talking about. That little baby, your kid, your child, you love that child. If you are a normal human being, some people might not. But normally you would love your children. And that is how God loves his children. And God gave us an opportunity. But in 325 AD, there was that Constantine I who said, now I become a Christian. But as a Christian, because I determine what you need to do, you are going to pray the following. They say vanity is a deadly sin. Trump wouldn't wear a mask because of how it might make him look. I wore one in this back area, but I didn't want to give the press the pleasure of seeing it. He was worried it might affect his spray tan. He was obsessed with how he looked in a mask. I had a mask on, I sort of liked the way I looked, and I thought it looked okay. It looked like the Lone Ranger. He sacrificed hundreds of thousands of Americans for his vanity, and then he sacrificed the people closest to him. Now they're all sick. Stephen Miller, Kellyanne Conway, Chris Christie, Ronna McDaniel, Kaylee McEnany, Mike Lee, Hope Hicks, even Melania. But then as soon as he got home, he took off his mask again as an active coronavirus patient who is deadly contagious. 215,000 people died because he didn't want you to see who he really is. This is what Donald Trump looks like without the spray tan and comb over. This is the ugly face of vanity. This is Trump unmasked. America, you deserve better. You deserve a president who cares about you, not just himself. And this is how I'm going to call this church. This is going to be the Roman Catholic Church. Okay. And you, buddy, you're going to be the Pope. Okay. And as a Pope, you have a certain right. And I'm giving you the power. And all of a sudden, there was a whole change in what Jesua HaMashiach had taught the people about the way, the truth, and the life. And we became followers of Jesus. Just say Jesus, then you don't go to the arena. Well, for the majority of people, they couldn't care less. They prayed, they loved the Lord their way because they prayed to all kinds of gods. So if you want me to pray now to whoopie doo God, then I'll pray to whoopie doo God. And that is why we have McDonald doing the same today. All he is doing is looking for power. And folks, if you serve to have power, you serve to serve. Serving to look for power, your mandate, your 
basis, your foundation is wrong. And like we started off, there's the body of Christ. There was no body of Christ. They were the followers on the way, the truth and the light. Now, why is that so important? Because reality tells us God Almighty is an awesome God, but his presence is on that narrow way. And if you don't know where your narrow way is, this is your narrow way. See, we are all taught certain things. We know, but it is so hard to believe. Why do I know that? Because it took me 60 years, six decades to really understand this. And it came because I was facing certain challenges that I could not overcome. And I was wondering why. And then I realized it was based on my belief system. And as I believed certain things, I was held liable. And yes, folks, I was sentenced to jail six years times three. And that is where I learned the hard way that God is a God of principles. God is the law and the law is perfect. God gave us the commandments, but they were first a covenant between the Jewish people and God, but they failed. And so then they became a commandment. See, a covenant and a commandment is two different things, because now you have the Ten Commandments. Those are for the children of darkness, but the children of light, we have a covenant agreement with God. What is the difference, you wonder? Well, the children of darkness, when we fail the Ten Commandments, we owe Satan a debt. And for each time we fail the Ten Commandments, we are paying our debt. And the debt becomes so far that Satan just grabs us. And that is what you're facing with this pandemic. How can we get out of it? By repenting, seeking the Lord. Of course you need a needle. Of course you might need all kinds of help to get there. But the real issue is, are you repenting? Because I found myself, no matter what my titles were, no matter how long I had preached, no matter how many people I prayed with and led to the Lord, I was a prodigal son. Because I discovered that my foundation was not the word of God. The foundation was what the emperor of Rome had said and the agreement between the Pope and the Emperor of Rome. And how do I know that? The Emperor of Rome had one thing. They had a vault and it is a 52 miles vault with all kinds of books and manuscript. And there are people that wrote down in Aramaic the language that Jesua spoke, but when he lived, when he was around on this world and when he resurrected from the death and they wrote about him in Aramaic, but there are very few people that speak that language. And one person in 1929 got permission to look at those books and translate them. And it took him many decades. And as he translated them, he published them in English. And I tell you folks, it is possible to understand what Jesua really wants. He cares for you. He cares for us. And we can be set free if we come to understand what the will of God is, not what the whole world says. That is the broad way, the broad way. Oh, folks, it is so sad to discover that yesterday when we had that vote, they gave in. They gave in because they were afraid, fear. Fear is false education appearing real. Trump is a scumbag. Trump is a liar. Trump is almost like I call it a 10 uh, pandemic with 10 plagues. It's no funny, you know, why like Trump appears to be an atomic with a pandemic with 10 plagues. There were 10 plagues when we were in Egypt. And when I say we, I mean the Jewish people. But we can get out of it. We can get out of it when we restore and go back to the Lord and say, Father, forgive me. I was wrong. See, the prodigal son doesn't mean if you're Jewish, a Muslim, a Christian. We are all prodigal sons and daughters. And we have to seek the Lord. 
if I start killing someone because I didn't get what I wanted. I am not a follower of God. I'm not a follower of Yeshua. I'm not a servant of God. I'm screwed up. I got it totally wrong. See, God says it is the action that determines who you are. And if this is what shows who the GOP is, then I am so sorry for you folks. Because Goliath won. Well, it was so simple as being honest with yourself. Forget the fear. If you're chosen, wonderful. If you're not chosen, wonderful. Who cares? Yes, folks. God is an awesome God. And you are a great person. You just made a stupid mistake. Don't let Goliath win. Don't let the evil win over your understanding and your desire to make a better living for your neighbor or your family, to take care of your family. And you as the body of Christ, go to your leaders and ask them, what is he talking about 325? I learned this at seminary. I didn't believe it. I didn't pay attention to it. It was a ah, big deal. But as long as I started living and continued to go on, I realized something was wrong. I'm now in my seventh decade, turning 71 this year. And you know what I only can see? God is a God of love. And if I cannot share that love with you, if I fail to share the love with you, then there's something wrong with me. And so I hope that you understand. I'm not blaming you. I'm only disappointed that you failed. But you can always restore by repentance. Turn around and don't do it anymore. And you, you really have to focus on what God is doing. Because the way you're going right now is not a good way. I am Brad Caleb, PhD, post hole digger. And I can tell you one thing, tough times never last. But tough people, they do. Bye for now.